Okay, welcome back. All right, so now we've got our donor copter. You'll notice that this is my first one, black one right here. Um, I threw basically the rear right motor. It's kind of the same demise. Um, since this one's newer, this is going to be my donor one until I can get some motors purchased. They're currently on back order. Um, uh, there's, there's probably some out there, but since I already have a copter I can uh, salvage from at this point, I'm just going to take uh, the motor from this guy. So I'm going to use the same motor, same color motor, the one with the black and white wire, so we know the same direction. We won't have any mix-ups. Um, again, I don't know if these motors can be reversed. I haven't tried it. Uh, but since they're a different color, I'm assuming that they uh, that they may not, or, or maybe they're just doing that in manufacturing so they don't mistakenly put the, the wires and the motors in the wrong spot for as far as directional thrust. So don't quote me on it, but... I'm staying safe. I'm going with the same wires, and uh, and uh, then I'll be a little bit easier. So what we need to do um, now this is for experienced people that have uh, soldered before. If this is your first time soldering, um, then you may want to get a piece of scrap board and just practice soldering wires on and off. <clears throat> if you know, if, um, if if it's yeah, if it's your first time, this is just something maybe someone's been soldering or is familiar with with it um, but what we got to do is we basically the tools we're going to use is soldering iron like this guy it's currently my uh, 30 watt iron right here with a fine tip and then I just kind of have a pick tool that I like to use um, I have that one or I've got this guy and I got some regular tweezers so we're going to go ahead and heat that pad up right here and we're going to lightly pull on that wire to get it off so first you can get some heat on that corner And right away that thing is ready to go and I'm going to put a little pressure pull that off just like that. Now we shouldn't have to use any solder um, taking these off and putting them on. Now be extremely careful that you do not hit the plastic and burn the plastic. Uh, for one you don't want to get it on this tip of the soldering iron that kind of makes a mess. And two you could damage the plastics for the thing. So I'm going to carefully hook this white wire here. I can get my tool in there and you want to be really careful these wires can snap if you're not careful and I'm going to lift that up alright so now we've got the motor successfully um, desoldered from the from the PCB board and then we're gonna go ahead and see if we can lift this motor out and uh, should be able to just pull this guy out here and easier said than done I'm sure but um, get the clips here carefully pull that motor out without damaging the plastic because I will fix this one um, get it going as a backup but for now we're just going to harvest the motor and put it in our other quad. Okay, YouTube viewers, all right, we've went ahead and pulled out the motor on the uh, other quadcopter and just barely pulled out the bad motor on this guy. So save yourself some uh, time and grief mark the motor you may be able to mark it while it's in the housing but just hurry and mark throw a black mark on it so we know that this guy's defective and we're gonna put him off the side here and then we're gonna get our good motor off our harvested quad right here you notice the prop on that split from its deal but the motor's good and so we're gonna go ahead and put that in the plastic housing and uh, you notice that there's a place for the wires and that to come out so we'll kind of have to position that in and make sure that they are uh, right where they need to be when we um, put this guy back in so let's see if we can get that in might be some finagling
And just be really careful those wires because they are fragile. And if you're a little too physical with them, if those clips get too much pressure on them, it could potentially uh, rip off the motor and then it's game over for that motor. So just be careful <clears throat> as you do that. And we're going to try to maybe use a pick tool in here to kind of coax those wires out. You, see, you know, you want to make sure they're out on that opening. Um, of course, you can look and see how the others are set up, but they are going out that opening. <clears throat> All right, just about have this one out. Of course, half this video is just going to be about fishing the wires out. So take your time. Don't rush things. Okay, and now we're ready to get these wires soldered. I've fished them out using my pick tool here. Um, the motor clicked in place, so now it's ready. So now what we're going to do is white is positive, I believe, here. Just checking my other one. White positive, black negative. They are labeled on the boards. You kind of have to look carefully, but white positive, black negative. So let's get our wires situated. They're going to kind of cross a little bit there. Um... A little bit of patience. So what we're going to do is just get this guy in place without having to hold up much. And I'm just going to kind of practice getting that guy to hold. Let's get in the video here so you can see what's going on. And we're just going to practice kind of holding that in place. So need that to cooperate. <clears throat> And get our iron again very carefully. We're going to get this, touch the pad, and let go. And our wire's in. Do the same thing for the black. I'm going to get it situated here and we're going to kind of do the same thing. And you shouldn't have to be putting any solder on this. Let go. And there we are. Now we just check. Bump the wires around. Make sure it didn't come off. And that's a good thing we made sure because that one did not stick. So put it in place. Put the iron on. Being careful not to burn too much here. You know, if you have to put a little bit of solder on, use your judgment, but make sure that you uh, don't put too much on because you can run into more trouble. All right, I'm going to try to poke around, prod, make sure both these wires are in place, which they are. Okay, so we've successfully attached those two wires and... Uh, We'll get a good prop on this uh, quad and we'll take it for a spin. Okay, YouTube viewers, all right, we've got the motor harvested and just first time powering this on. I'm going to turn on my radio. I'm going to see if we can calibrate it really quick by putting the throttle, left throttle stick to the bottom right and flickering around the sticks. There we go. See that little flash? That means the gyro is now calibrated. Now we're just going to go ahead and just Puff it a little bit here, make sure that motor is spinning good. And looks like we're good. I'm gonna do a little periolette here on the counter. Make sure, well, half periolette, there we go, full. So that's telling me we're good to go. Let's see if we can do a light hover here. And looks like we're good. And the motors sound good. The one. You could tell if they, they, the motors are starting to go out because it will, you'll make an unfamiliar hum. It won't sound like a mosquito sound. It will actually sound like one of them's got a thrown sleeve bearing. Uh, okay, you two viewers, now that we got the quadcopter repaired, we did a hover test and now it's time for a flight. I just got done charging it with my handy portable power station right here. We have these uh, for sale on our eBay store. This thing's got about 4,400 milliamps uh, worth of power. 
Um, this is a 100 milliamp deal. Um, we're guesstimating about 30 charges. We're actually in the process of finding out exactly how many charges we can get on this guy, but needless to say, you've got um, enough charges to be satisfied uh, out on the road. So simply, we plugged it in, we've hooked it up to our quad, got it charged. I'll show you right here. It's already charged, but I'll plug it in. Um, turn our charger on. See that we've got uh, still 100% here registering on the charger. And um, since we're already charged, I'm just going to shut it off. Um, unplug it from the deal. Let's go ahead and turn the quad on. Yes. Test it out here. We're going to get our radio. We'll turn the radio on. Okay, we got a signal lock. Um, left stick, bottom right to calibrate the gyro. Let's take this out here so we can see it. Let's focus. There we go. Now, to calibrate the, the gyro again, you want your left throttle stick to the very bottom right, and you want to flip the right stick left and right until you get that flash. That calibrates the gyro. That's important because if you've uh, pulled this out of the box, like most, started flying and noticed that, gosh, this thing kind of always kind of drifts to the right or left or forward or back, and you're trying to pay attention to correct the drift, and at the same time, you, you kind of get disoriented and you crash it. So it's really important to get that gyro calibrated. So now let's go ahead and try flying it now with that new motor, see how it goes. Camera may not be focused. This YouTube app doesn't seem to autofocus. But as you can see right there, it seems to be doing pretty good. Let's turn it around. And out of camera view, but we'll bring it in for a nice, smooth landing. Oh, almost smooth. Anyhow, uh, uh, give me a like or vote here. Uh, like our channel. We'll put some more videos on for further repairs if we have any more. Um, but we'll also do some lessons on how to fly quads uh, using the Proto X quadcopter. So again, like our channel, um, and if you have any questions, feel free to make a comment in the below section or uh, or uh, send me a message. Thanks. Bye.